So let's look at some more examples on how to evaluate some basic limits. So we'll start with the limit as x approaches 1 of 3. And remember, we have that rule that if we're taking a limit of a function that is just a constant, then the answer is just going to be that constant. So in this case, our answer would be 3. So let's look at the limit as x approaches 2 for the function x. Remember, this was also another rule that we can just plug our value of x into the function. So in this case, we can plug our 2 into this x, and our answer for this limit is just 2. Now let's look at the limit as x approaches 3 of x squared. And this is another rule. Remember we said if we had a function that was raised to a power and we plug in the x value, we just have to take it to that power, right? So in this case, our answer would be 3 squared, which we know to be 9. So then what happens if we take the limit as x approaches 4 of the function 2x? Well, remember that we have that rule that if we have a function and it's multiplied by a scalar or a constant, that we can actually split that up or we can just do them at the same time. And so what I mean by that is we could just go ahead and plug in 4. So we could say that the limit here is 2 times 4, which equals 8. But we could also have written this as 2 times the limit as x approaches 4 of x. And this would get you the same answer because then we'd have 2 times 4 plugged into x, which would be 4, and that also would equal 8. So now we'll look at some examples that are a little more involved, but not too more difficult than the ones we just looked at. We'll start with this example, where we have the limit as x approaches 4 of 2x minus 1. And in this case, we can just plug in our value of 4 into the function. So we'll have our answer of 2 times 4 minus 1, which equals 8 minus 1, which equals 7. Then we'll look at the limit as x approaches 2 for the function negative x squared plus 4. In this example, once again, we can just plug in 2 and get our limit. So we'll have a negative 2 squared plus 4, and that is going to equal a negative 4 plus 4, which is going to equal 0. All right, next we're going to look at the limit as x approaches 1 for the function 2x cubed minus x squared plus 3x. And once again, to solve this limit, all we have to do is plug in our value of x into the function. So we'll have 2 times 1 cubed minus 1 squared plus 3 times 1. And then we can reduce this to 2 times 1 minus 1 plus 3. So that's essentially 2 minus 1, which is 1, plus 3, which equals 4. So next we're going to look at the limit as x approaches negative 1 for the function 4 over x plus 3. And once again, we can just plug in our value of x, and we will find that we have 4 over negative 1 plus 3, which equals 4 divided by 2, which equals 2. And then we'll do another example. We'll look at the limit as x approaches 5 of the cubed root of 3 plus x. And we can plug in our 5 into this, and we'll find we have the cubed root of 3 plus 5, which is going to be equal to the cubed root of 8. And the cubed root of 8 is going to be 2, because 2 times 2 times 2 equals 8. So 2 is going to be our answer for that limit. Next, we're going to be looking at the limit as x approaches 0 for the function 3x minus 2 cubed. So we're going to plug in our 0, and we'll see what happens here. We'll have 3 times 0 minus 2 to the third power. And this is going to be equal to 0 minus 2 third power, which is equal to negative 2 to the third power. And that is going to be negative 8, because negative 2 times negative 2 times negative 2 would be negative 8. I just want to point out that we could have expanded 
this part of the function if we wanted to, but you don't have to, as we did, we just plugged in our value right into the x. There's no need to expand this function. So now I just want to quickly show you what happens when we take the limit of a trigonometric function. So we'll look at the limit as x approaches 0 for the function sine of x, and we just plug in our 0, right? So we have sine of 0, which we know to be 0. So that would be our answer in this scenario. We'll actually look at more complex trigonometric limits uh, in a future lesson. So this is as simple as it gets, but they do get a lot more complicated, and there are some methods that you'll have to learn to do that. Um, but we'll save that for another time. Okay, so now we're going to look at an example that uses some of the properties of limits that we learned back in our lesson. So again, if you haven't watched that lesson, I would really recommend that you go back and watch that to see some of these properties of limits before we apply them in this example. So we'll have two functions. We'll have f of x equals x plus 3. And then we'll also have g of x, which is going to be equal to x squared. And so we're going to be looking at the limit as x approaches 1 for the function f of x plus g of x. And so what we can do here is we can take these functions and plug them right into here since we're going to be taking the limit of the same value for both of them. So since this is just a function, we don't know what its limit is and we don't know what the limit of this function is either. We can just put them in here and find the limit as x approaches 1 for both of them together. So we can rewrite this as the limit as x approaches 1 for the function x plus 3 plus x squared, right? And you'll notice that this ended up right here, which is f of x, and that this x squared is g of x, which goes right here. And remember that when you aren't plugging in your value yet, you need to carry over this limit notation. Until you plug in the value of 1, you have to keep this when rewriting your equation. Because if you don't write that, then the equality won't be true. The limit as x approaches 1 of f of x plus g of x is not equal to x plus 3 plus x squared. It's equal to the limit of those two functions added together. So now let's continue to solve, and we will plug in our 1. We'll have 1 plus 3 plus 1 squared, and that is going to be equal to 5. Next, we're going to look at the limit as x approaches 1 for f of x multiplied by g of x. And just like we did with the last one, we can actually plug in these functions, right? We can take f of x equals x plus 3 and g of x equals x squared and put them right into this limit. So we can say that this equals the limit as x approaches 1 of x plus 3 times x squared. So in this case, we could distribute this x squared into this function, but we don't need to. In fact, we can just plug that 1 right into the equation. And so that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to write that this equals the quantity 1 plus 3 times 1 squared. And this will equal 4 times 1, right? We'll have 4 times 1, which equals 4. Next, we'll look at the limit as x approaches 1 for g of x divided by f of x. And just like we did for the previous two, we can just plug these functions in and find their limit together. So we have the limit as x approaches 1 for x squared divided by x plus 3. Again, this comes from g of x and g of x being x squared, so that would go right here. And then we have f of x, which is x plus 3, and we can put that in the denominator. Then we can evaluate. We can plug in 1, and we'll see what happens. So I'm going to write that this equals 1 squared over 1 plus 3, which equals 1 over 4. And so our answer is 1 fourth. So finally, we're going to look at our last example. It's probably going to be the most complex one that we've looked at so far, but it's not too bad. So we're going to have the limit as x approaches 1, and uh, get ready here, the function f of x squared minus the function g of x squared. Whoa, right? That seems pretty crazy, but we can actually do it fairly easily. So just like we did before, we can take our function f of x equals x plus 3 and plug it in to here. And we could take our function g of x and plug that in right here. 
But remember now, this time we've also got these squares to deal with. So we can't forget to square our functions. So let's go into our next step and we'll plug those functions in. So we'll have the limit as x approaches one of x plus three, that's our function for f of x squared minus our function g of x, x squared, which would also be squared. So we can actually simplify this just a little bit. I'm not gonna do any expanding because that's not necessary because we can just plug one right in. So we can write the limit as x approaches one of x plus three squared, and this would be all in here, minus x to the fourth. I'm just gonna simplify that part. But then we can plug in one, and we'll find that the limit as x approaches one would be one plus three squared minus one to the fourth power, which is going to be equal to four squared minus one, which would equal 16 minus one, which is equal to 15. All right, so that's all the examples I had on how to evaluate limits. Hopefully you found this helpful and you now have a solid understanding of how to evaluate simple limits by just plugging in the value of x into the equation. Next time we're gonna be looking at some more complicated limits to evaluate where it's not as simple as just plugging in. We have to do some work before we can do the plugging in. So hopefully you learned something. If you have any questions, feel free to put them in the comments and I'll see you next time.